It may surprise you that seven out of 10 athletes go broke after their careers are over. I'm here with Austin Philbin of Dynasty Financial Partners to discuss this reality. Austin, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Some advisors say that it's hard to explain risk management to athletes who are inherently risk takers. Why is this a misperception? It's a misperception, I think, because as the general public views these athletes and the things that they do on a daily basis, like throwing their bodies against each other, um, they think that that's risky. But what you have to understand is these athletes have been doing it for a very long period of time, so their sport is not risky to them. With that said, athletes have limited earning careers, tax challenges, and high-flying lifestyles. Maybe they're competing with their peers. What are financial advisors doing wrong when advising athletes, or is the dilemma the fact that these athletes are not listening to advice? These are individuals in their early 20s, um, some of them late teens, that are given a tremendous sum of money and expected to live off that sum of money for, call it, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. That's a very difficult challenge if there's not a distinct plan in place. The other misconception is that that cash flow, that large cash flow, is going to continue throughout their life. When you look at the average uh, career of athletes, it's somewhere in the range of three to five, depending on the sport. So case study, let's look at NFL player Terrell Owens. He recently purchased a casino in Alabama, lost a ton of money. What would you have said to him if he came to you? So when, when any athlete or any client, for that matter, comes to an investment manager and wants to evaluate the investment, you have to look at it within the context of their entire financial picture. Mm -hmm. So a casino in its general nature is an illiquid investment, right? So you look at how that would fit into their overall investment and investable asset base from a return and risk standpoint, and then help them to make an appropriate decision. Just to be clear, you believe that athletes have a stigma when it comes to their finances. How can you correct that stigma? The first thing is, um, no matter what, I or probably anyone else in the industry is not going to be able to correct that stigma because what the media wants to do is uh, focus on the, the stories that sell, the stories in which people generate hundreds of millions of dollars over their career and then end up bankrupt. The reality of the situation is, the, the, the percentage of bankruptcy is higher for professional athletes, but there are issues all over uh, the client spectrum in terms of not having an appropriate plan and getting bad investment advice. It's not specific to athletes. Let's go back to that percentage, though. 70% of athletes go broke when their careers are over. Well, I think that, again, um, because of the unique scenario of athletes and because they are human beings, um, I would argue that any profession, even a hedge fund manager, if I created that same scenario for them where they only had a three to five year earning uh, period and then after that they're going to have to live on that wealth for the rest of their life and then surround those individuals with people that were spending a lot of money, what is human nature going to do? How is it going to dictate their spending? And I don't care how smart you are, I still think that seven out of ten of those individuals would end up with some uh, financial difficulties. Austin, very interesting. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much.